we said in the video from yesterday that we were exploring this idea of average speed, so change in distance divided by change in time. And we wanted to extend it to understand how you could find the speed of something at an exact moment just by using a distance formula for it. So we said we had a situation where we had a distance, which we were gonna call Y. Y is the distance the rock is from where it started, T seconds after it starts falling. We said that's gonna be a function of the time. So we use this notation, function of T. And we said specifically, Here's an explanation of how to compute the distance if you know the time. So you square the time and we're going to multiply by 16. So we practice finding the average speed over the time interval 0 to 2 seconds. We said, well, what if we really wanted to know the time at exactly 2? We'd want the interval, the time interval, to go down to 0. And then we're going to have a divide by 0 problem. So notice that what we want is... I'll remind us that we practiced letting that difference in the two time values be like 0.1 and then 0.01 and 0.001. We used our calculator. Well, I told you that I use my calculator, and we kept letting that get smaller, and it seemed like that all of that average speed was getting closer and closer and closer to this one number. So we had another idea that maybe the instantaneous speed is 64. Um, feet per second. We want to know if there's an algebra way to arrive at that same result so that I don't have to use my computer or my calculator every time. So here's what we want to do. We're going to make that same computation, change in position, divided by change in time. I'm going to come to this slide. So change in position, divided by change in time. And so that means we had f of t was 16t squared. I'm just copying that from the other slide so we remember. So I'm going to take the position at the later time and subtract the position at the earlier time. That's the change in position, which is distance. And I'm going to have the later time. Notice what happens here. The function rule says that if I want to find the output given some input t, I have to square that input and then multiply it by 16. Well here my input is 2 plus h, so that's why 2 plus h is getting squared and then multiplied by 16 because the input variable is supposed to get squared and then multiplied by 16. So this part here is f of 2, the position of the rock 2 seconds after it starts falling, and this h comes from 2 plus h minus 2. So I'm going to start at the top of the next slide with this expression. So this is pretty awesome. You saw that animation today give you a little bit of an idea what's really happening. We have two points on our graph. We're trying to find the slope of the line that connects them. Um, and we really, really, really want there to be no distance between them. So we let them get closer and closer and closer. We did it in the last video with a table. I'm going to show you how we can do it with algebra. I'm going to end up overcoming this divide by zero problem, which is going to be the beginning of our ability to study calculus. So that letter, that variable h, it's standing for some tiny value. When I used my calculator, first it was like 0.1, and then it was 0 0.01 and 0 0.0001, and you can imagine letting it get smaller and smaller and smaller. So watch this. I can't let it be actually equal to zero, because then I'll have divide by zero in the denominator, which is a big problem. If instead I think about a way to rewrite that numerator, remember that 2 plus h means to take 2 plus h, sorry, 2 plus h squared means to take 2 plus h and multiply it by itself. So I could do that here. That's 2 plus h times 2 plus h. That takes four multiplications. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times h is 2h, plus another 2 times h is another 2h to make 4h, and then the fourth multiplication, h squared. So that's how 2 plus h squared turns into 4 plus 4h plus h squared. Now I could distribute that 16, and I have a new expression, which still has an h in the denominator. But watch 
Watch what happens. It comes like that. Here I am, I have 16H plus, 64H plus 16H squared over H. If you can imagine factoring out the H, right? That's what's happened in the numerator. Now the H in the numerator and the H in the denominator cancel. And I have this new expression, the instantaneous velocity is, you know, I'm approximating because H isn't zero, but I'm approximating and I get down to the 64 plus 16 times H. But what did H stand for? H was a number that was so close to zero that it was essentially zero. I couldn't let it be exactly zero because I'd be dividing by zero earlier. But now I don't have the division by zero problem anymore. I was able to cancel out those H's. I don't have a denominator anymore. And now I acknowledge I'm going to let H get closer and closer and closer to zero. And now I can let it equal zero. So 64 plus 16H, as H goes towards zero, 16H is going to go towards zero. That's going to cancel out and leave me the 64 feet per second that my calculator estimated before, but now I have an algebra answer. All right, so you have four textbook problems to work on. Uh, I think it's one and three that are pretty straightforward because they're a computation of average speed. And the other two, you're asked to compute instantaneous speed. So you're going to use the same process. You might find that the equations, like those functions for position, are different. You might find that the particular time value you've been asked to explore is different. In this case, we were exploring instantaneous speed at two seconds. So you're going to have to think about what ways this expression is going to be different How is this going to be different for the problems you're assigned? But it's going to be that same process. You're going to try to use algebra to make your division by zero problem go away so that at the end you can pretend that H really gets to zero and you'll have some part of your answer cancel out and should have one single number as your answer for instantaneous speed. Good luck.